today on the Bassmasters, what the bass fishing world has been waiting for all season. The test of the best. The best professional bass anglers on the planet go rod to rod for the coveted classic crown. The challenge, to master the coastal marshes of the South Louisiana Delta. Ah, New Orleans, Louisiana's international city with world flair attractions. The French Quarter, the French Market, Bourbon Street's jazz clubs, memorable cuisine, and the Louisiana Superdome, home to world-class sporting championships. The perfect place for the 29th Bassmasters Classic World Championship of Professional Bass Fishing. Over the next three days, the 45 heavyweights of the Bassmaster Tournament Trail will slug it out for the ultimate prize, the Classic Trophy, worth $100,000 and a projected payoff of a million dollars to the champion in endorsements, sponsor fees, and how-to seminars, books, and videos. This is Big Time Casting for Cash. And big money for catching little green fish that need measure only 12 inches to be considered a keeper. But this is not your average fishing trip. This is the classic, the pressure cooker of bass fishing. Lifelong fame comes with a trophy. But fishing fame can be fickle. A missed key bite and it's down the drain. New Orleans is known as a big easy, but there's nothing easy about fishing the Delta as Bassmasters TV pro commentator Sam Sweat knows. You know, Louisiana Delta is over 500 square miles, and that's a lot of area for these fishermen to literally learn and cover. And obviously, they can't do it in the time that they have. They're going to have to take a section and learn it and really understand what's going on in that particular area. Unfortunately, there's over 20 maps that's going to cover this area, and it's really going to be mind-boggling, the things that they got to think about before they go out and fish this tournament. I really think the areas like Delacro, Louisiana, and Venice, the mouth of the Mississippi River, Bayou Blackwell was one with Canyon Hill, we're going to yield some good fishes, but they also got to realize it's going to take a long time to get down there, and that's a two-hour rod, one way, and so you can imagine that's eating four hours of your day, and you don't have that much time to fish. I think the key bet is literally to stay close to home, next to the ramp, within 15, 20 minutes of the ramp, and fish long and hard all day. Some key areas here would be uh, Desalmans and Lake Salvador. They've got good fish in that area, and if you have the patience, they can win that tournament very, very close, and it's going to be a very, very important to really fish hard, because it's hot here. Sam's a Bassmaster Touring Pro, and he's fished these Louisiana marshes for over 25 years. Also on the water reporting is Kenyon Hill, the winner of the Kmart Top 150 tournament here last fall. There's going to be a lot of lures used in this tournament, spinnerbaits, buzzbaits, all different kinds of topwaters and rats and flukes. But the key, I think, to winning this tournament is you're going to have to concentrate on just catching a few fish. Not a lot of fish, but a few big fish. And for me, the best bet is the jig, the jig and chunk. This is the same combination I used to win here in October, concentrating on bigger fish and not so much on numbers. I think the fishermen that will go for three to five bites a day and concentrate on strictly the bigger fish will have the best shot at winning this tournament. Just to qualify for the Classic is an angling achievement. Only 45 slots are available, 25 from the Kmart Top 150 Tour, and five each from the Central, Western, and Eastern Invitationals, and five divisional winners from the BASS Federation Championship. So, who do our pro TV commentators favor, and why? My pick this year has to be Gary Klein, excellent fisherman whose time is due, and if he can get to where he wants to fish every day, he'll definitely be a contender. I have a lot of ifs. Uh, if certain things don't happen to me, and if I make it through my two locks, and if I can get there and have enough fishing time, I think I might have an outside shot at this event. I feel I'm fishing at this under these conditions probably the, the best area of the Delta right now. And, um, the only problem that I'm having is that time management is so crucial. And I don't know if this classy can be won with uh, only fishing two and a half hours a day, at least the first two days, and I might get four and a half hours on the last day. I really don't know. Uh, obviously, you know, if, if you get in the right little deal with the right fish, you can catch them quick. These fish are very, very easy to catch. They're unmolested, no pressure, and uh, but they move. And, and that's the whole key for me is I've got to relocate. And I don't know if I can do that in two and a half hours. 
I tell you what, Kenyon, that's an excellent fact, but I tell you, my pick is gonna be Denny Brower. He can handle the pressure well, and this time with the summer heat, he loves to fish tight cover, and that's gonna be a true pattern that the fish are gonna be holding on right now. Well, I'm gonna put myself in an area where I'm probably gonna have more time than some of the other anglers. I'm gonna to try to be a little more proficient. Time-wise, that may be a key to it. Uh, the biggest problem is gonna be getting enough bites because I'm gonna fish the whole time for big fish. And if I get five bites, I'll probably uh, have a chance to win the tournament if I can get that each day. But... I know where I'm fishing this tournament. I know where I'm gonna win this thing. Look at the size of that bass. My goodness. That's the second big one that I've caught down through here. Look at that. Man. Whew. Doggies, those are the type of fish it takes to win a tournament like the Classic. I tell you what, let's go out there and see how many green trout are going to be caught in South Louisiana. Green trout? Now, what's a green trout? Well, that's what we're fishing for, the largemouth black bass. And we're going to catch them right in front of the Trinosas next to the Rosos. Now, wait a minute. You're going to catch green trout in the Trinosas right in front of the Rosos? What's a Roso and what's a Trinos? Well, a Trinos is a little dish that comes out of the bayous and it just filters clean water in it. And it filters it right through these pencil reeds and the bass just hold into them really, really good. I got it. Green trout in the Trinosas by the Rosos. Well, la zone bon ton roule. La zone bon ton roule? What does that mean? Well, down here in New Orleans, that simply means let the good times roll. Sounds good to me. Party, New Orleans. The bass won't bite tonight. Y'all hang with us now. We've been in meetings all week. Now we're going out and howl and throw bees all <laughs> night long. All night long. Our son is John Sappington, and we're here from Ardmore, Oklahoma, to yell and cheer him on. We're just all having a ball here in New Orleans. What a great place for a tournament. For sure, there's a tournament going on. First round action in the 1999 Bassmasters Classic World Finals is coming up. Bayou Signet State Park, 6 a.m., the workday starts early for these Bassmasters Classic pros. They face an eight-hour shift, for some not nearly enough time. Much of it will be consumed boat riding and praying the bass are still where they left them after the practice round. But these anglers travel in high style. Each basser is provided an identical 20-foot high-performance Ranger bass rig. Powered by Mercury's 225 horsepower Optimax outboard with a top end speed of over 65 miles an hour. There are 55 gallons of fuel on board. With the Merc's improved gas efficiency, that's about four hours running time. Each pro is paired with a press angler or observer. Among fishermen, the Classic has truly reached Super Bowl status and the media coverage reaches worldwide. The sponsoring Bass Angler Sportsman Society, or BASS, based in Montgomery, Alabama, has over 600,000 members. There are organized bass clubs in Japan, Spain, Italy, South Africa, Zimbabwe, Canada, Mexico, and elsewhere, proving there's no boundary for the growing sport of bass fishing. Theoretically, there's no limits to this classic. This South Louisiana marshland stretches from Mississippi to Texas, and a lot of it holds bass. As we've learned, certain areas hold concentrations of bigger bass, partly due to private stocking of Florida strange big mouse. With the hot weather conditions, best bet is that a five bass daily limit of 13 to 15 pounds will put a pro in the running. The big 100 grand winner will need something around 45 pounds. Kenyon Hill's winning weight of 61 pounds, five ounces, for 20 bass in the Kmart Top 150 came from the Bayou Black area. Located on the eastern edges of the Chapalaya Basin, this varying complex of oil field canals, small lakes, and shallow marshes is Kevin Van Dam's starting spot. 
and Kenyon Hill with cameraman Charlie Wilsey are alongside the 1999 Bass Angler of the Year. If you'll notice, these canals are just lined with uh, grass, no foil and hyacinths. It all looks great, but if you watch the way Kevin's throwing, he's concentrating on the points and pockets. And if you look at it, get up next to it and look down the side, it's a series of little bitty points and pockets that are created here. And that's what he's concentrating on. If you'll concentrate on that, just the high spots, you'll eliminate about 70% of this canal and, and keep his bait in the high percentage areas a lot longer. Georgia pro Mickey Bruce is working the same pattern in the same area, but with a different lure and presentation. What I'm doing is I'm using 25 pound test line and a three quarter ounce Stanley jig. The reason I'm using a three quarter ounce, I believe as the water warms up, fish get, you know, acclimated to chasing things that's moving real fast. And, and when they're laying pretty tight to this cover, I think the, uh, the strike that I'm enticing the fish to hit is a reaction strike rather than a feeding strike. I honestly believe as the day goes long, <clears throat> the fish begin to back up even tighter and tighter underneath, underneath this uh, matted patches of grass and hydrilla. Okay, Bassmasters, what have we learned? Right, the bass are holding tight in the heavy vegetation. And the keys to more bites? Work the canal intersections. Water flow from current or wind movement helps. Concentrate casts in the strike zone, those points in the grass line. Flippin' rods, 20 to 25 pound test line, and heavier three quarter to one ounce jigs with plastic frog chunks or four inch worm trailers are the tools for the job. If there's a dark horse favorite in this classic field, it's Florida's Pete Delaveras. If anybody knows how to fish aquatic vegetation, it's Big Pete. Sam Sweat and Bassmaster cameraman Bo Anella are in the Dissolvins area. Pete's been fishing a four inch coral worm for a while now. He's just picked up a 3 8 ounce pig and jig, and I think it's going to catch him a couple of bigger fish. Wait, 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 wait. Look, look. He's got one. Well, we'll just take them any way we can get them. <laughs> That's the first time I have ever broken a rod on a hook set, ever. Well, it looks like the jig is a hot bait for the moment. Sam, in your experience on the Delta, is there a better bait in the tackle box? We also got the crawfish crankbait. That is an excellent choice down here. And the best thing about the crawfish, like all Louisiana, we eat everything down here. But the secret that we have to all our baits, and it's just like our food, we got the secret key ingredients right here. And it spices up everything and makes the fishing even hotter. Y'all just gotta try this type of lure scent and y'all won't go wrong. This is how we do it in South Louisiana. Uh, yee, this is good. Those crazy Cajuns. Well, there's more fun and bass catching action coming up. And we'll catch up with defending classic champion Denny Brower. So don't go away. Five of them like that, it were. Fish ate that old Strike King Pro model jig right in the middle of all that grass. Yeah, now that is nice, nice bass. Denny Brower, a star's glow around him since joining the Bassmaster Tournament Trail 19 years ago. But lately, the beacon is more a spotlight, the poster boy of pro bass fishing. Smiling on a weedy cereal box, the true measure of a champion. Denny's in the zone, a dimension athletes reach when everything starts clicking. His 1998 classic victory came in a stretch when he won three Bassmaster Kmart Top 150 tournaments in a row. Confidence plays a big part in winning. And as Denny confides to Bassmaster TV cameraman Amos Postoke after the practice day, he's primed again. I've got a lot of confidence in that area now. It's a big stretch. It's a huge grass line. It's probably about a mile long, and there's got to be more than just them two bass there. And I've pretty well committed after catching those two to just move in there the first day, and hopefully there won't be a lot of local traffic or other competitors from the tournament there. And if for some reason I'd have most of it to myself, you never know what might happen. 
And happen it did. On the first pass along his confidence area this morning, four largemouths in short order grabbed the blue and black jig. Then that line stretching moment as a bigger bass has Denny scrambling to keep it out of the thick mat of weeds. That's the lunker size needed to win this classic. Not all the pre-classic heavyweight favorites are packing a knockout punch this first round. Four-time classic champion Rick Klun, always a threat, elects to fish nearer the takeoff. However, the early topwater bite is just so-so, only undersized strikes. Let's check back with Kenyon Hill and how this season's top-ranked Kevin Van Dam is faring. There he's got him one. I don't think it's going to be quite long enough to be a keeper, though. But he got a bite, and that's, you know, here on day one, first fish to catch in the morning is always kind of important. Helps take the edge off a little bit. Right back here, you see a trenos, or a slough, or a drainage from, uh, from the swamp in behind this canal. That's a textbook spot down here in the Louisiana Delta. What'll happen is, is the tide and or the wind will cause current or water to flow out of these trenosses and it'll stack fish up here in these little funnel areas uh, where nutrients and bait fish and different things come flushing through here, brings fresh water in. Current, it's a definite piece to the puzzle to catching these Delta largemouths. Mega Bucks winner, Ron Sheffield, is shying away from the dead end canals. My whole pattern evolves around open-ended canals, fishing where the water is moving. If it's going out, it's moving all the time. If it's coming in, it's moving all the time. When a barge comes by, it's moving. Something's creating this water movement all the time throughout the course of the day, and that's the trick for me to catch these fish. I can't go in a dead-end canal and, and, and catch any fish. That's, it just seems like the water must be too snag, stagnant. It's two or three degrees hotter back in those canals, and uh, these fish are really, really tight on the cover. The oil field workboats moving up the canal are a mixed blessing for Ron Shuffield. On one hand, the barge traffic creates current, but also stirs up the silty bottom. Ron's got another nagging problem a sore left elbow. Normally a left-handed flipper, he's had to change his presentation to hold the rod in his right hand. And of course, he finds it awkward to set the hook and play a good-sized bass. Oh, boy, that's what can bug you. You think you got you a good bass, and it's it turns into one of these old redfish. Of course, he ain't that big. He's a keeper. The Louisiana Delta is a complex fishery. Feeding into the Gulf, it's home to saltwater run fish and influenced by tidal changes. The tide is the number one thing that controls all of this water. Of course, the wind can affect it too because the wind can alter the tides. Rodney Wagley, a 43-year-old Baton Rouge Glass Company owner, He's one of five amateur wrangler anglers to qualify and Louisiana's sole representative. On the practice day, Rodney tells Bassmaster's cameraman, Charles Wilsey, about his dream come true. It's all provided me with an opportunity to go on and fish as a pro next year. And, uh, and that's one of the other neat things about all of this. Uh, I'll finally get to, to live out, you know, another part of my dream as far as my fishing career goes. Obviously, the Bayou State Basser is a local favorite. Here's how the New Orleans paper sums up his chances. Wagley will have a huge burden of self-imposed pressure, but his intimate knowledge of the Delta's freaky moods is too big an advantage to ignore. If he gets off to a big start, no one will catch him. I tell you, we were pulling about this guy. We were pulling for you. All day long, we heard about, and many people may not know the story. This morning, as you were going out, you hit a stump underneath the water. Is that the deal? No, Hank, that's not it, Elle. All right, well, tell us the deal. One pound even, one pound. Dewey wants to tell us that you had one pound. Now, tell us what happened this morning. Well, Hank, we wasn't a quarter of a mile from the, uh, from the starting point, and uh, we were, you know, more than a safe distance behind uh, the Judge Gary Dobbins was in front of me. I was in his prop wash. Something surfaced. I don't know if it was a big, you know, garfish or what. Uh, we hit it. It was just mushy, and the prop lost its bite. 
What happens in the next few seconds is a nightmare to Rodney Wagley's dream. The boat spins 360 degrees, slams over stumps, and hits stern first into the bank. Wagley suffers two broken fingers, a chip bone in his left hand, but he refuses to quit. He vows to finish the tournament. Hey, the Bassmasters from Louisiana Delta, stay close, we'll be right back. This is the 1999 Bassmasters Classic coming to you from the Louisiana Swamp. Y'all stay with us. Hey, you guys coming to get me? It's not funny anymore. Guys. Bassmasters Classic weigh-in, a growing spectacle. As many as 30,000 cheering fans are expected for the final showdown. The anglers are hauled by the official Chevy trucks to the weigh-in stage, accompanied by high-energy music and laser lights. The daily limit is five bass. A dead fish results in a four-ounce penalty. Hank Parker, himself a two-time classic champion, knows how important Mickey Bruce's first aid creel really is. I'll tell you, I had a great day. Man, that was a beautiful fish, a good average all the way around. Yeah, that's gonna be the key in this one. There's a lot of fish out there, and, and uh, being able to catch a good one every day or a couple like I did is gonna make a big difference. Well, let's see what these five bass weigh, and I promise you, you are gonna take the lead. 16, 10. <laughs> How about that? The big bass, five pounds, seven ounces. A possible $1,000 bonus as the Pennzoil Marine Daily Lunker Prize. More important, Mickey's ahead of the predicted daily catch by over two pounds. But Davey Height, the 1997 Bass Angler of the Year, is right in the hunt. Oh, look at that! Yeah. Woo! Great, I'm feeling 16-11 to take the lead, 16-10 to tie. Real close. Oh! 16 pounds, 9 ounces. One ounce, the difference. That may be the storyline of this classic, but the headline today belongs to Tennessee's Jack Wade. Look down, look down. 16 pounds, 13 ounces. Beautiful. I'm not nervous. Uh, nothing to get nervous about. This is just fishing. I mean, it's a three-day event, and I was just hoping to catch, you know, 15 pounds or better each day, and then hopefully, you know, by the time of day three comes out, I mean, a uh, man could really go for it and hopefully catch him a 20-pound bait. I mean, I'm around the kind of fish. So here's how the leaders stack up. Jack Wade, Mickey Bruce, and Davey Height, separated by just four ounces. Michael Iaconelli, the BASS National Federation champ, is close with 15 pounds, one ounce, as is defending classic king Denny Brower at 14.4. Next come veteran Ron Shuffield with 14 pounds, Gary Klein with 12.9, Big Pete Tilleveros at 11.10, followed by Ken Cook, the 91 classic winner, and 1994 runner-up Tommy Biffle. Angler of the Year Kevin Van Dam ranks 11th, over five pounds behind the leaders. It's like Jack's flipping a, a black and blue jig. He says he's using heavy line, 25 pound test. Flip the outside edge of the hyacinths. What happens, these hyacinths get blown into these banks and create a little ceiling for these fish. And so it's a very good comfort zone. They tuck just underneath these hyacinths. What he's doing, he's taking a jig and concentrating uh, once again, on just a little isolated clumps, the points of them, sometimes back in the pockets. A good start for Jack Wade. Over in the Lake Buff area, near Raceland, Louisiana, our Bassmaster TV crew is alongside Davey Height, who's in third place. Davey's got a good fish on. Ah, get in here. He's got him in the boat. That's the second keeper fish of the morning. Well, when I came in here and pre-fished, I just, I used a lot of different plastics, and this was the, you know, produced the best. This is a gambler bacon rind, and the fish seemed to, because the water quality isn't really good, the fish seemed to suspend and be up high, so this, this swims real good. It's got better action because of the big tail. With the summer heat, water quality is a big consideration. Oxygen levels most likely will be better near the surface and under the aquatic vegetation. Lures worked along the bottom are less likely to get bit than a swimming lure presentation just below the overhead cover. Davey's got his third fish on. Seems to be a good fish. 
It's a real good fish. You need to really get this one in. He's trying to wear him down. Davy's heart's beating right now. That'll work. Good job, man. Stay busy. Vicki Bruce's pattern along the current points in the Bayou Black Area canals is holding true. Kind of unique spot here. Water's three or four foot deep right against this shoreline. I caught a four plus here yesterday. Ron Shuffield in sixth is getting enough bites, but needs big bites to make a move on the leaders. When the bass are on a flippin' bite, best not count Denny Brower out. His confidence area has produced some bigger fish. Well, how's yesterday's leader, Jack Wade, handling the pressure? Let's check with Kenyon Hill. Looks like, you know, he's keeping his composure pretty good, his casting's still with him. And... And I think if he keeps slinging that jig around in those high you know, he'll have a chance at a good sack today. He's just got to be patient, and that's tough to do in this kind of pressure. Another strike for Ron Shuffield, and another bass in the boat. He's moving up the leaderboard. Davy Heights working on another sizable bag today. He's already scored a five bass limit, and hopefully with his next catch, he can cull. How's he doing, Sam? Davy's got another good fish on. He's a strong fish. This one's gonna help him out again. This will definitely give him a few more ounces. Right now, Davey just caught a six fish, and what he's doing is culling. What helped me 10 ounces? That's a lot. Kenyon Hill has moved down the canal from Jack Wade's location to check on Mickey Bruce. Kenyon, has Mickey changed his approach? He's throwing a three quarter ounce. Uh, that's what he's starting with, to fish the outside edges and a little bit thinner stuff. I don't know. As the day comes on and it gets brighter and a little get bit of boat warm. traffic, those fish will tuck up underneath that, uh, the cover just a little bit. They don't necessarily go way, way, way back in there, but they'll get in there a foot or two just inside the lip of it. And you need a heavier jig than even a three quarter to get back there, and that's when he goes to a one ounce. Locating enough fish for three days is a concern. Davy Height may run out of fish. The practice day, I didn't fish. I didn't allow myself enough time to fish. I came in here late and counted 20 three to five pounders floating. So when I came in here yesterday, I didn't know if there was another fish alive. Whew. Well, Davey, what's the reason for the fish kill? I don't know. I think, you know, they sprayed this whole area just recently. The combination of maybe that and the real high water temperature. One of the keys to winning this tournament is going to be able to keep your catch alive. There's a four ounce penalty for every dead fish you weigh in. Surface temperature here in Louisiana is 92 degrees, very hot. So what you're going to have to do is keep your aerators on manual and keep them circulating all the time. Also keep lots of catch and release and ice. You need to continue to check your fish from time to time in these water conditions to make sure they're all doing okay. Good one. David's got a real good fish on this. is going to help him out tremendously. Just wearing them down. God, you know, this is just exciting. It's just the importance of getting this fish in.
Juan Sheffield, with 30 pounds total, moves atop the day two leaderboard. And Ron's got these Louisiana fish figured out. And these fish are literally eating this, eating this jig up with this pocket craw chunk. And I'm spraying a little bit of this formula on there they've got too. It's a scent, it's called Slam It. And crawfish flavor, and them bass can't stand it. But Davy Height's got a big fish formula too. With 35 pounds, 12 ounces, Davy Height climbs into the driver's seat and will be tough to catch. The nearest challenger, Ron Sheffield, is 5 pounds, 12 ounces behind. Mickey Bruce with 28-11 ranks third, followed closely by Larry Nixon and Gary Klein. Nixon jumps from 16th to 4th with today's 18 pounds, 8 ounces. Defending champ Denny Brower, yesterday's leader Jack Wade, Federation winner Michael Iaconelli, Peter Tilaveros, and rookie pro Dustin Wilkes round out the top ten. I'm going to have to have some really good quality bites and have a real good day landing fish to, to be able to have a shot at winning this. And then hope maybe Dave, Davey will stump his toe if anything. I wish him the best. He's never won a classic. I know what a classic win can do to your career. I've never won it either, and I bad want it. There you go. Yeah, right. There you go. It's a good way to start the morning, Ron. Well, that's every day, that, that point, about that same flip. I've caught a two-pounder every day. Today's extended schedule will give the anglers two more hours fishing time, a fact that Larry Nixon is counting on. Yesterday, he figured out the pattern. And what I'm doing is just pitching a, a 3 8 ounce jig here, trying to fish a little bit uh, softer and a little slower since it's so still this morning, and just pitching to all the ambush points and anywhere that I, you know, really just everything, it looks good. If it looks like a good ambush point to me, I'm just pitching it right where I think the fish is sitting. And if I can drop it right in front of him, I can get him to bite it. For sure, the extra time will work to Gary Klein's advantage. He spent most of his day going and coming to fish the Delacroix area. Yeah, buddy. So most folks figure Classic 99 is Davy Heights to lose rather than win. Despite a comfortable advantage, no doubt a little uncertainty can creep in during the morning run from the launch point. The fish kill in the bayou. Will spectator boats follow? What about local fishing pressure? The area is not large enough for boat traffic. He's been here before. Davy's big disappointment in pro fishing was not holding on to the classic lead in the final round three years ago. But that was then, and this is now. Davey just put his first fish in a live well. He's got a five pound lead over other competitors. He's looking really good. I know he's feeling really good about right now because getting that first fish is important. Let's see if he can get four more good ones. I think Davey's got a real good chance to win this one. Davey's got another good fish on. This one's gonna help him out tremendously. He's still doing the same thing. He's fishing the suspended treetops that lay over into the bayou. I'm using a gambler, uh, Florida screw lock. And it, it comes in black, but that's how many, how much the teeth have scraped that up. And the hook I'm using is a five all on a rigging hook. And it's just an awesome hook. And then, of course, the gambler baking rind. And I'll put a rattle in it, which I think definitely is important here with the color of water and everything. The, the bait is, you know, a lot of people fish jigs and a lot of people fish worms, but this bait is a kind of got a jig profile because of those front legs and then this big tail swims and I'm swimming this bait. Uh, and this 3-8 sinker is a little bigger than you would think you'd swim with, but it, they seem to like it moving fast. So, rather than fishing on the bottom, I'm swimming with a bait that's pretty heavy. It's the same identical spot where he caught his big bass yesterday. Same tree, same lay down. Boy, Davey's got to be feeling good right now. There'll be no slowing down today. I'm gonna try to catch 20 pounds if I can. 
Davey's got another fish on. This one's gonna help him out tremendously. It's a good heavy fish. Oh, God. God, that's got to hurt in a time like this. He needs every ounce that can help him. Even though he has a five pound lead over the rest of them, he's got a limit in the boat. Ounces count tremendously. I tried to hurry that fish too much. Baby, it's hot, but the action, it's gonna get even hotter. It's the third and final round of the 1999 Bassmasters Classic. Don't go anywhere. Davey Height lost the 1996 Bassmaster Classic by just a pound. Other classics have been lost by just mere ounces, so every ounce in this classic is going to mean precious money, and hopefully he's going to win this thing. This one's going to clinch it for him if he can get it in. He had big bass of the day yesterday. It could be another big bass today. I'm just trying to wear him down. Yeah. That's it. That's the one we need. Classic Week in New Orleans. More than just a fishing contest. More than 100,000 fans take part in a variety of events. Fun for the whole family. The Kmart Kids Classic, a fishing tournament for 7 to 14-year-olds with Bassmasters Classic pros on hand to provide tips and sign autographs for young and old. Youngsters learn to cast, flip, and pitch at the Bassmaster Casting Kids range. The national program presented by Zebco and Kmart qualifies boys and girls to compete for the National Casting Kids Finals. C.J. Shirey of Talladega, Alabama, and Emily Hedrick of Lexington, North Carolina, are the best among 150,000 youngsters entered in the nationwide events. Each receives a $5,000 college scholarship. And there's the popular Classic Outdoor Show, a mecca for any wannabe pros. 300,000 square feet, sprawling over the Ernest N. Morial Convention Center. With the newest in fishing tackle, bass rigs, tow vehicles, outboard power, and the latest in electronics, accessories, and trolling motors, such as Motor Guide's powerful new unit featuring 107 pounds of thrust. Naturally, the bell ringer is the final classic weigh-in, complete with a Mardi Gras-style parade. The host sponsors toss beads to the crowd in true New Orleans tradition. And there are pom-pom cheerleaders, Dixieland marchers, and a door prize drawing for a $30,000 Ranger Classic rig. The lucky winner is John Coble of Violet, Louisiana, who celebrates by tossing the entry forms like confetti. With the longer fishing day, anything might happen. And it does. Angler of the Year Kevin Van Dam vaults from 18th place into contention with today's catch of 18 pounds, 2 ounces. A great comeback effort. Well, I went out there today mad at him from yesterday, <laughs> and I just made up my mind today that I was going to have a good showing yet. Ron Shuffield needs only 8 pounds, 11 ounces. He can do 10 it. 10 pounds, 12 ounces. 10 pounds, 12 ounces, and a new leader, Ron Sheffield. My flipping arms wore out. I can't flip anymore, I don't believe, for about another week. But I tell you what, you've got a great fishery here in New Orleans, Louisiana area. Take care of it. I, I'd love, I wish I had it in my backyard. I love it. 
So with only a few fishermen left, it's Ron Sheffield in first place with 40 pounds, four ounces, followed by classic rookie Mark Risk, Kevin Van Dam, Jack Wade, and Mickey Bruce, who struggled for eight and a half pounds today. Michael Iaconelli, the number one ranked amateur in the field, needs 13 pounds, 15 ounces. Here we go for five baths. And the weight, 13 pounds, six ounces. Ooh. Oh, just a little bit short, 13.6. That puts you in second place, Mike. That's a good run at it. Speaking of a good run, Brent Chapman, a 27-year-old Lake Quivira, Kansas pro, weighed in 19 pounds, 15 ounces earlier to claim big string honors thus far. But back to the moment at hand, Gary Klein's in line. 12-2. I believe he may have it. Those two pounders are starting to grow a little bit. What do you think? Hey, those are heavy fish, Hank, so maybe I, I might. Would I need 12-2? I'll probably have 12-3. All right, we're going to look for 12-3. We got five bass. We're going to put them on the scale. 14 pounds, 7 ounces. <laughs> Very Klein, 14-7. You know, 1 o'clock, I had five fish in live that weighed about 7, 8 pounds. I thought, you know, I better go salvage this event. So I ran back in a little, little spot that I had, and I caught those fish in about 20 minutes in consecutive cast. Larry Nixon has yet to weigh in. <laughs> Boy, he has got two good. Oh, he's going to do it. Five bass to go 15 pounds, six ounces. Larry Nixon, 15, six, a new leader. Now defending champion Denny Brower. Can he repeat? This is an awesome bag of fish. How do you keep doing this, man? I don't know. <laughs> it, it was one of them days, Hank, that really went well. That's all I can say. Well, if you're trying to impress me, you're doing a heck of a job of it. All right, let's see what they weigh. Five bass that go 17 pounds, 9 ounces. <laughs> 45 pounds, 11 ounces for Denny Brown. Almost to the ounce what is predicted to win Classic 99. There's just one challenger left, Davey Height. Oh. Five bath. Wait, 19 pounds, 14 ounces. <laughs> Davey Height. Man, how in the world? Good gracious. Talk to me, David. I lost my biggest one. Woo. Who cares? I know, who cares? I was caring a lot at the time, though. All right. Davey Height, the undisputed heavyweight champion of the bass fishing world. The Bass Masters Classic Trophy. A lifetime award he can carry proudly. A most impressive performance. A winning margin of almost 10 pounds. Achieved in truly a test of the best in one of the world's great fisheries, the Louisiana Delta. We hope you've enjoyed this special presentation of the 29th Annual Bassmaster Classic World Championship of Professional Fishing. And thanks for following the Bassmaster Tournament Trail this season on TNN Outdoors. For the Bassmasters, I'm Bob Cobb. Hope to see you all again next season right here. The Bassmasters Classic has been brought to you by Chevy Trucks, Mercury Outboards, Kmart, Ranger Boats, Quantum, Motor Guide, Plano Tackle Systems, Pennzoil Marine, Raytheon, Wrangler Rugged Wear, Jersey's Outdoors, Old Spice High Endurance, Cooper Tires, Man's Bait Company, and the Bass Angler Sportsman Society. God, you know, this is just exciting. It's just the importance of getting this fish in.
Taskmaster's cameraman, Amos Postok, passed away September 14th of a heart attack en route to post-production taping. We dedicate this Bassmasters classic to his memory. A good friend, a good man, a great cameraman.